All right, we're ready to finally start to draw some walls. Now, this is a two-story building with a roof. And even though the exterior walls go from, you know, level one up to the roof, we don't draw the wall in Revit all the way up. We can, but what we're going to do um, for the lessons learned is we're going to draw the main floor up to the underside of the second floor, and then we're going to start our wall again above the second floor and go up to the roof. So two sets of walls instead of one continuous uh, balloon wall, as they would call it. Now I see my, my project base point is still on. I'm going to turn that off, so watch. I'm going to tab over here. Oops, click in. Pick on that project base point, go up to my light bulb and say hide the category. Boom, it's gone. Click out. Okay, now I'm going to draw some walls. So we have our main building over here and then we have a different building over here. The exterior wall is going to be the same all the way around, just, you know, different levels. So let's start by drawing some walls. Let's have a look at our walls. We go to architecture and we just click on the wall tab. And from there, I'm going to say edit type. Okay. And I've turned my preview on here, so you can turn that on. We want this to say section, not floor plan, okay? And then we can click on our wall type. So we can pick on here, we can see there's a wall type. Now I'm gonna use my arrow key, I'm scrolling, right? I'm, I've picked in here, I'm using my arrow key on my keyboard, I'm gonna scroll through, and you can see there's all different wall types, okay? And they're made up of different wall types, and we're gonna have a look at the structure. So what I want is, I'm gonna go all the way back up, I want exterior, brick on metal stud okay brick and steel studs okay and i can click in here with my mouse and i can also zoom okay pan and zoom believe it or not so you can see there's some different layers in there i'm going to hit edit structure inside of here you can see look it's blue here there's the finish it's 90 millimeters about three inches okay and there is an airspace and then there's a membrane layer and then there's a um, substructure of plywood then we have our core layer, which is the steel studs, zooming or scrolling down. Then we have another membrane layer, and then we have the finished gypsum drywall of half an inch. Okay, so again, I can use my arrow key and scroll through here, and you can see these are the different layers of the wall. We can sit, hit insert and delete and move up and down and define the thicknesses and the materials and all that stuff inside of here. So this looks good. I'm going to hit OK. And okay, so we just wanted to have a look. Now I'm going to look at where the wall is going from. It's going up height. I'm on top of main. It's important if you're not on there to go there. And I'm going to say up to top of second. Okay, but it's not really the top of second. It's the underside of the floor. But for now, we're just going to go with up to top of second. Okay, and it's going to tell me that's approximately four meters, which is correct. And I am going to say the location line. The, the points I'm going to pick are going to be the finish face exterior of the wall at the outside of the brick is my placement point. But I'm going to offset it by 25 millimeters, which is 25, oops, 25 millimeters, which is about an inch. So an inch overhang beyond that because my foundation wall is going to be right on that edge. And I'm going to get sneaky and use the rectangle tool at the same time. So I'm going to pick on here and I, I'm going to zoom in. Now, as I go to move, you can see I'm dragging out and you can see there's that little one inch overhang. If you get it on the wrong side, use your space bar and it flips it from one side to the next. So I'm going to go scrolling all the way down to here and I'm going to pick on there. Okay. Now I'm going to just draw a regular line segment and all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave all of this the same on my options bar. I'm not going to really touch it. I'm going to just click on here Click on there, okay? Again, if it goes on the wrong side, use your space bar with your thumb. Click on here and click there. Escape, escape. Now, in fact, you know what? This wall should be back here. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use my align tool, watch. Just winging it here, right? Align to here, this wall, okay? The only thing is it needed to be an inch away. Also, I'm set to be coarse. I'm going to change this to say fine detail. I'm also going to change this to say shaded. It's going to show me my colors. Okay, so I didn't get my inch offset. So now I'm just going to pick on this wall. I'm literally going to use my move tool. 
pick anywhere and say move oh I want to go this direction by 25 25 millimeters or one inch escape escape click out okay so that's going to be kind of my parking garage and this is my main building okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my trim tool okay I have it as TR as my shortcut you can see in brackets so you can click on here trim it's like fill it this guy and this guy pick the edges you want escape escape now actually let me think about it this one isn't yeah I'm gonna keep these two separate because this one is the main building and this one is the garage building so what I'm gonna do the problem is if I drag this to here okay and then I drag this to here what it's gonna do is it's gonna morph them into one wall and I don't really want that I want to keep the break in there I'm not convinced I'm gonna they're going to be one big continuous wall. So what I'm going to do is pick on here. I'm going to right click on this little dot and say disallow join, which means it won't try to join the other one. Now I'm going to use my align tool off my modify tab and, and use multiple. Okay, align two here, this guy and this guy. I'm not going to bother locking it. Escape, escape. That way I keep these two walls independent just in case this doesn't go up as high as this one you know this one maybe this one in fact it won't i'm purposely going to make these three walls a little bit lower than the second floor so let's go to our 3d view and see what we have can't see anything z a zoom all click in z a oh what's the problem i don't see anything hmm isn't that interesting well let's hit our light bulb and let's do z a again Okay, there's my project base point. Where's my building? Hmm, click out. Let's click out here. Okay, now I'm going to have a look over here at my properties of my view, and I'm going to notice, oh, look, the default discipline for the 3D view of this project um, is structural. I'm not sure why. I thought if I used the default template, and it looks like it's set to be the 3D view. Okay, I'm in this view right now, this little 3D guy. I'm in this view right here, the little doghouse. It's set to be structural. That'll really throw you off because structural does not show non-load-bearing walls, and my architectural walls are non-load-bearing. Let's change the discipline of this view to be architectural. Aha, ZA, zoom all. Okay, there's our building. There's our little split back there. Okay, let's go to a south elevation. Okay, there's our walls going from our main floor up to our second floor. Okay, now watch what I'm going to do in here. I'm going to go back to my 3D view. And I'm just going to take purposely take these three guys using my crossing box. And I'm going to say they are up top of main up to level two and let's say minus 400 millimeters, which is about, you know, minus a foot or so. Just to, to make it so that it's not quite the same as that okay so there's our uh, main floor walls exterior and let's do a save so we'll do a save as get ready for our next lesson project and that was lesson six so this next one will be lesson seven